it's an old school venue, but what I love is that it's lost none of its danger element and that, that's sort of side of jeopardy. To be honest with you, it's very hard for me to comment on the car when I'm trying to figure out so much shit myself. You know, do you know what I'm saying? Just don't be too hard. It's a new track, it's not easy, Michael. And you're not like miles off, you know, we're not talking about two seconds. But we always knew that Imola is going to be one of those tracks that are going to be uh, very difficult for Michael because it's a very technical track. Great position. Reminder, no repetition before the line. And we are racing once again here at Imola with the European Le Mans Series in 2022. Oh, oh just Michael Fassbender. Fassbender. There's nothing that Michael Fassbender could have done about that. No. Should I have done anything different than that? Scenario? No, wrong place, wrong time. If you're not there, it's been alone. Oh, you want me for anything? Or? No, it's time in Aragon. See it in the mall here. For me, in Le Mans, the most important is get your rhythm, build up confidence, is the most important, build up confidence and then uh, you do the race and that's it. You need to have the respect, yes, for sure, you, you, will, you, will, you will do the race and you will go also there to the limit. Um, but in a, in a way where it's secure and then once you feel comfortable, just do this for your four, five, six hours. To give him the chance to experience what it's like to do three double stints in a very short amount of time, we thought it's a good idea to do an endurance test, which basically followed the idea of a brass driver scenario of a 24-hour race in a controlled environment. very good for me to be in that sort of pressure scenario to have the race weekend and everything that comes with that and then to go directly into a night session which I've never really done before. What's happening? Oh, How are you man? Oh, very good. Chief? At 3 o'clock I would like to go out. We do just three laps because everything is new from uh, for Le Mans. Michael doing 10 laps as well to get to know the track. Then we always have the blocks of Zach doing 10 laps. Michael double stint, new tires, and then Zach doing five laps. So this is basically, I'm gonna be in the car seven and a half hours. You will do, yeah, like the proper stints is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Don't, don't look so seven hours. Within a 13 hour period, I got to do seven hours driving in the car. Fuck, I gotta oh, gotta got do my tired, best. Right? Yeah, just say it. Well, that's why we're doing it anyways, right? To see, what happens when you get tired? But I'm gonna to get to do like a couple of 20 minute sessions before I go straight into like one hour. Okay, guys, drop the car. Then we can go. We sit alone. I lack the spine. We say a lot, but feel dumb tight. Do we? Turn one, relatively early turn in, but really early on the throttle. So when you do any sort of move when you're loaded like that, nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. Yeah. Michael Fox is the box box. Copy. A bit better. Much better. Yeah. Yeah. So now you have more consistency with the throttle. The objective for me was, was to get comfortable driving at night. That was primary. It was important for me and I think the whole team that I did a night stint to really get the full experience of Le Mans. Double stint now, right? Let's, yeah, yeah boy. Yeah. I'll be on the radio as well, so I'll be sitting next to Arne on the radio. And the, so water, the water thing's full? I'll double check. I felt a responsibility to bring the car home in one piece. That was a car that was also going to be competing in Le Mans. So they were really the primary objectives and to, to physically maintain in the correct way to get the six hours done. Radio check. Radio peak. 17 left to go. 17. 
He was out there doing his laps and after one and a half stints you could really tell that he was getting tired. His lap times got slower, he missed braking points and at one point he ran out of the track. I think he just lost the focus a little bit. Where's the braking zone? Everything's okay though. Copy. It was braking 20 meters later. So. <laughs> it's difficult. How many laps left? Two more. Two more. Box, box, box. Driver changes to Zap. Need that information earlier. That's information I need earlier, yeah? Don't tell me coming down the pit lane, I gotta do a driver change with him. Yeah, but you, you also did two stints. I'm just telling you. Yeah, you but know? I'm also telling you, you did two stints, so it's always driver chaser anyway. I'm just telling you, give me that information on the lap in. That's all I'm saying. I don't need anything back and forth. Just tell me, like, you're gonna come into the pit. I'm not attacking you. I'm just giving you information that I need. Yo, no, so no, you don't no. have to get defensive with me. No, 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 but... I'm just telling you something that's important for me is information. Yeah. And well, regardless of what was told to me before, after two hours, I'm tired. It's an important reminder. And I'm not, it's not like anything bad. Got our work cut out for us in the morning. Ah. <laughs> but do you feel that you're on the limit driving wise? I mean, not like exhaustion, but like. No, I, I'm definitely not driving the car on its limit, but the thing is, it's great to be here getting lap times and experience in the car. Well, that's great, but. <laughs> Right now I feel a little bit like I did in Spa, you know, in the first year of the EMS. And this is my second time in Spa, and I'm racing against these fucking LMGs. It's kind of crazy. I just know my own limits and where I'm at. And each time I get into the car, I'm at my limit, you know. And I'm, I'm searching for the connection to the car while I'm doing all these races. This is my second time to Spa, and it's a fucking dangerous track. It's kind of crazy. I'm like, fuck. Here we are doing the first night practice two weeks before the race, you know. It's kind of fucking nuts. And it's, up, you know, it's all this like... It's just... But I think mentally it was a lot of information for him and probably started to build the stress um, pre Le Mans. Uh, but to be honest, uh, for a first encounter, for me, for that kind of situation, it's kind of to be expected. But already he was, you know, kind of saying, like, I don't want to do this, I want to do that, like, I, I, I need to take a step back. Uh, which is good, he recognized it, but also maybe gave, gave us an idea of, like, okay, what's, what do we need to focus on for, for the long I don't know, I'm not angry when I come out and I say that. I'm just like, <clears throat> two hours intense for me. I feel like, for me to do my first night test two weeks before I'm doing them all, I'm just feeling the pressure a little bit. So when I communicate, I don't mean it to be an attack. When I come into the pits, I'm thinking, hit the thing, do the thing, do the thing. And when you're talking to me, it's information that I need, but it just distracts me a little bit and I'm already like... But you know what happens? You had not enough fuel, and no, I was I, I was checking. No, 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 it was okay. But I had to check. But I'm also the lollipop. Yeah. So this so, is why I was in the lollipop yeah, yeah. there. But so. just I just want you to know if I come out and I'm talking, like it's not that I'm angry. I'm just no, but me neither. How I replied was also not like this. I'm also tired. Okay. But it's okay. Okay. Just Sorry. Okay. finish the test. It 
was just about finding his own rhythm and find ways to stay focused. I think it wasn't easy for him out there because he was the only car on track driving by himself. It's easy to lose focus in those moments. But I think it was good for him to make this experience now because if he does those mistakes in Le Mans, they could become really costly. Just did so far. Yeah? Three in the morning. Michael, you're very consistent, very good. 13 laps to go. Michael, your last hit was very good, very consistent. It was also very good. So, one hit to go. Michael, box the left, box the box. The next break is two hours. really struggled the last 15 laps there. The rest was fine, but I really just like wiped. I was just like fucking delirious. Take some rest. It was, it was good. Yeah, the last 15 laps. Thank God I didn't crash poor dad's car. <laughs> Fuck me, all night I was like, don't crash Fred's car. It's okay. Didn't set anything on fire, but consistent. Sorry, yeah, for earlier. No, no, no. I was just super fucking stressed. Yeah, but it's not nice to drive alone yeah. as well, and then... Just like, <laughs> just like everything is like... But just have the feeling you're always holding back because you don't want to fuck up or you don't want to crash like this. Well, you know, for me, I, I realize, like, there's no point in me pushing on tracks that I don't know. You know, I can push them. Can no, because then you can lose, you can lose much more. Yeah. You gain maybe half and a second by you're pushing. And like this, yeah. you know? And it's like, it's not... At some point, I'm gonna lose focus or I'm gonna get tired. No, you can maybe do two tens faster, but then you have no... 20 second, 25 but have, second fuck up. But you have no, no limits or you have, you have no, no buffer anymore and yeah, then you yeah. can... If you're one time in the gravel or you, you miss one time in breaking point like Arianto and you hit the car, it's also over. Yeah. Thank you. Man. When we left Aragon, I think we left with mixed feelings. He never experienced so much driving within a 12-hour period. He never experienced night driving. So for the first time, we could really see that it was a big challenge for him and what it means to do an endurance race. Still okay with the motion? Yep. Okay, copy. So, the last thing we did before going to Le Mans was one final sim test. This was the last step of the preparation. Basically, the end of the road to Le Mans. The last four years we did everything we could to prepare Michael in the best way possible. 
who took multiple races, spent hours and hours analyzing his laps. He jumped into a car a million times, did countless pit stops. We traveled around the world for four years and learned all these different circuits. Had setbacks. We did different car control trainings. Michael spent time in his own simulator, took part in cup races, took his own cup car out on the track. He prepared physically and mentally. We lost races and had successful races. In the end, it is all experience, and we always knew it's the most important thing to gain as much experience within the four years of our journey. Experience that will help him on the biggest stage possible. Oh, sorry, bro. It is what it is. And now, it's finally time to go. It's time to go to the biggest race in the world, the 24 hours of Le Mans. 11 hours, 59 minutes and 20 seconds to go. We are halfway in and oh, look at that. Meanwhile, with the 91 Porsche GT sweeping up through the Dunlop Cup. Definitely no love lost between this uh, Ferrari and Porsche fight. Look at that battle on the oh. street. Oh, wheel to wheel banging coming into Indianapolis and Just got him on the outside. Wow, what a move. Richard Beats in Austria. So for sure it would be a dream to drive two cars in Le Mans, but uh, unfortunately this is uh, not possible. I remember back in 2012, they decided to come back with a factory program. Uh, we developed the 991 RSA and uh, we came back in 2013 where we won also the 24 of Le Mans. And this was basically the beginning of a, of, of a nice and successful journey of the factory team. 2015, I was able together with Michael Christensen to win the championship. Uh, and also now we are still fighting for championships. But even if it was quite successful, everything comes to an end and basically Porsche will start the LMDH program and it will be the factory program from the future on, but there will be not uh, a GT factory program, which means uh, my program will end. And it's kind of bittersweet for me because of course, you know, you, so, you know we, we, we train so much, we, we try to give him everything we know and, and, and prepare him as good as possible for Le Mans. Uh, so, I want to be, you know, part of this journey. But on the other hand, if you are, you know, have been in the factory program from the beginning, you're also kind of okay. I, I want to be there also in the factory program uh, in the last year. So I've done it, you know, from the beginning, from 13 until 22. So as Porsche asked me to be in the works team, I will be there. Well, Le Mans always has been a special place for myself. I was lucky enough to win it in 2007, where it was the first time for me competing there. And ever since this moment, it was like, okay, it's like coming home. So knowing that it could be the last Le Mans I'm competing, uh, for sure it was like, this is the year where we have to, where we have to go for it, you know. Um, I have been with Fred together driving in Le Mans since 2014. And with Jimmy also we had some really good moments. We finished, I think, two, two times P2 uh, together. But never, you know, we were never able to win it together. And uh, it was really a group of people where I thought like they deserve to win Le Mans and it would be a nice moment if we have a chance and if Le Mans chooses us as the winner. Very good. Ready? Now look outside, please. Perfect. Very good. At some point, we knew that Richie is going to join the works team for Le Mans and that he's not going to be part of our team. So we knew we need somebody that has been here before, knows the track, knows how to set up the car in the, in the right manner and um, just brings that knowledge to the table. And again in my camera. 